Well, hello, good people. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. All right, we've had our first practice against the Denver Broncos. And a um, couple of things, okay? You know, the biggest thing that you want to do when you practice against somebody else, or actually practice in general, is you want to make sure you get out with no harm. And here's the thing. Um, John Ridgway was helped off the field, but he did eventually get off on his own power. They're monitoring the system, monitoring him and making sure, hopefully, that it's just a little tweak or, or whatever out there. Um, another thing that was interesting was, you know, they're practicing – at mile high, mile high, you know, it's kind of funny to call it mile high. You know, Denver was one of the, you know, I mean, Colorado was one of the first places that weed was actually legal, which is great for Randy Gregory, who was definitely on the sidelines there with the bucket hat and shorts, trying to egg on some of his teammates and things, you know, to kind of get some stuff started. But some of the players kind of noticed the difference in the air. Navelle Gallimore, I love Navelle Gallimore. You know, I love the fat boys. The fat boys are back and you know they can never be whack um Navelle Gallimore I remember last year when we first got pads on he was like yeah this is when you can smack them because yeah he he likes the contact so he was quoted as saying I thought I was tripping he's like is it just me he said I'm looking around at, at and the check the engine light came the check the engine light came on I was like hold on hold on I guess that they that's the reason why they call it mile high because he was like exhausted and you know watching the practice we did a live stream during the practice throughout and of course we have tons and tons of eagle trolls that come in uh because of course they figure that they're the greatest team since sliced bread um but definitely the cowboys players um we're getting the first dose of heat as well now when practice started i think it was like 86 or 87 degrees now they've been practicing in oxnard where the high temperature has been like 72 so you've got the heat and now all of a sudden you've got the, you know, mile high air, which is thinner, which would definitely exhaust the Dallas Cowboys players. Now it did get a little chippy out there. Um, Zeke Elliott was, was, you know, he was kind of rocked a little bit by Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb kind of, you know, boom. Um, I mean, really gave him a good thud um, in there. And they kind of have some words a little bit. He said, you know, they exchanged words afterwards. He said, you ain't got to do that, man. He said, my bad, bro. You got to keep them up. Aggression's natural. At the end of the day, it's all love. It, it's all love. Yeah, okay. It's all love to all of a sudden you lose somebody for the whole season. Um, but I've got to say, my quarterback, he looked good. He looked real good. And I love it. I love it. I 100% love it. In fact, Let's take a look at how good the connection is. Let's, let's pop in here. Let, let's take a look. Actually, let's make this a little bit bigger here because I want you to really see. You don't need to see me. Let, let me. let me blow it up a little bit here. Boom. Let's look at that connection. Dak to CD. But if boy, if that ain't on the money, look, and, and then you see the drop, right? You see, oh, you see him drop it, right? Let, let's watch that again. Let's watch that again. Look at this. Dak in midseason form. That ain't no dinking and dunking. Looks him off, boom, comes back to him. Perfect ball placement. And look at that, midseason form of, you know, let, let's get the fans all riled up. I love it. Now, again, it did get a little bit choppy. There were like four different incidences in there. I think Noah Brown had his helmet actually pulled off and so on. But that's what you expect when you're out there in the heat, you're against another team and things, and you're getting that work in. Now, here's what I want to say. Here's what I want to say, and I know, you know, the Dak haters are out there. You know, Dak, he got to perform this year, or he needs to go. It's like, okay, and who are you replacing him with? Who are you replacing? That, that's the thing that drives me crazy. If you've got somebody you can replace him with that's going to win a Super Bowl, 
by all means, I say do that. But I don't ever get an answer. I just hit replace Dak or trade Dak. Trade Dak. Trade him for what? Trade him for what? Take a look at the Washington Commanders. Look at all the you know, – they're looking back and saying, maybe we should have held on to Kirk Cousins because they didn't had nine stiffs in that time since then. And see, y'all don't seem to remember before we got Tony Romo, all the mother humpers that came through this place after Troy Aikman. It was literally like we were Washington. But be that as it may, I want you to understand something and why I have a lot of hope in this season. Because Dak Prescott – he couldn't do that last year. Dak could not do any of that last year. Dak Prescott last year was unable to throw in training camp. Do you remember that? He couldn't play in preseason games. Not that he was going to play in preseason games. He could not work out. He was still rehabbing. I mean, he was on the field and things, but he was still actually working on his leg. Never mind even throwing to his wide receivers. He didn't. He couldn't. And finally, the last week or so of training camp, uh, or before the season started, training camp was actually over. They were back at the star, was when he finally got a chance to start throwing again. So the fact that this guy is now pinpoint accurate, and that's not the only perfect pass we've seen. He's been hitting guys left and right. He is going to be a major difference maker beyond what we saw last year, which was 37 TDs, 4,400 and some odd yards and only 10 interceptions. And that's why, as a Cowboy fan, you should have a lot of hope into this season. Um, the other thing, we are getting some guys back on the field. Uh, Jeremy Sprinkle is one of our tight ends, of course, and Jake Ferguson's back on the field. I pray that John Ridgeway is not hurt badly, that it's not anything serious or anything like that, uh, but we'll have to wait and see and monitor as well. But for the standpoint of looking at Micah Parsons, who literally would have had several sacks of Russell Wilson today, um, he looks in midseason form. He looks like, uh, if you were to say what happened last year with Chase Young, who was Defensive Rookie of the Year, um, the way he came back the next year, he didn't look anything like he did the year before. We have the polar opposite in Micah Parsons. Micah Parsons seems to be even better than he was. Um and one final note that was good, and I've got to dig in a little bit more. Um, <clears throat> you only see so much here on practice, you got, and you've got to rely on the people that are actually there. And it's totally a different narrative that you hear um, than what you actually see when you're at practice. Um, it's hard to judge because they're, you know, you're getting like a snapshot from the talking heads out there of what was good, bits and pieces of things. You have to kind of put it together. But when you're there, you get a totally different feel, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to go to Commander's Camp because we'd heard about how bad Carson Wentz was. Carson Wentz is not a great quarterback, but he's not as bad as what you've heard um, from the talking heads and things. So, you know, there's a reason why you actually play the games. And, of course, Philly 500 has visions of grandeur and is going all in. He's got all the chips, the mortgage uh I mean, the, the, the deed to the house and everything put in on the season that he's just like going crazy. I, I Good luck with that, buddy. Good luck with that. Um, the other thing that was good to see was seeing Russell Wilson with uh, Dan Quinn on the sidelines there talking. You know, those guys together won a Super Bowl in Seattle and now both are elsewhere. Football. Not for long. Nothing lasts for very long. All right. I hope you guys are having a great day. And, of course, you know how we roll. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth. You can't Hurts. handle the truth. Hurts. The pass. Throws. Pick. Horrible pass. Oh, my God. 